because it's one thing to do comedy and it's one thing to do drama, but it's, it's a particular different set of skill sets, especially if you can do both. That's what our guy can do. Take a look at this. So I know a little bit more now. Do you think I could play a little bit? Not just like that, you can't. What do you mean? How do you think I should start this? I think we should start you out at quarterback. Okay, quarterback, no problem. 42, 69, 40. <laughs> I just, I just barfed in my mouth. <laughs> that goes through. No, Sean would jump uh, on 22 minutes. The last time Sean was in this red chair, the conversation became very emotional, talking about the passing of his mom and his memory from the moment. Uh, he's someone whose heart has never quite left home, and I think that's why he's really excited to be part of his new project back in his hometown in Newfoundland. Take a look. I mean, come on, man. It's a little pocket of human culture that is slowly fading away. If we don't do something to at least revitalize the small communities of, of Newfoundland, it's gone. Please welcome back to the program, Sean Gumbler. As always, my name. Hi, guys. Nice to see you. Last time you were here, man, it was amazing. It, oh. it, was, it, was, yeah, it, it, it was heavy it at was point. Heavy. It was heavy at point. But it right? was truthful. It was you know? real, man. And you were great. You great. I mean, you know what? That was that was an interesting pivot mo moment for me. And uh, we actually made a film about it. After that, after that moment yeah, that really where I broke down, I made a film uh, called uh, Every Word is Absolutely Here's True. Here's a clip from the last time Sean was on the show, just to set it up. And I apologize if I get... <sighs> I remember people thought it was a joke when it happened. A little emotional. But I want to share the story. It's a cool story. Um, so, I don't talk about it a lot. But, um, that was, obviously, that was the story of how I didn't get Leafs tickets right. for that particular season. I was lined up. And it's even tough to talk about now, even though they're back. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, I yeah, just that, want that was, Bill... my, that was my reaction when I found out I did get leave tickets. It was <laughs> <laughs> horrible for me. We were talking about the passing of your mother. Yes, was, my mom yeah. passed away, and I, and I honestly, I didn't expect that to happen. And you leaned in and said, you want to? I'm like, yeah, of course, man. Let's do it. Let's talk about it. But what was so great about that moment, and it was great for the show, for this show, but it was great for what I, my journey I was on. We were shooting this documentary film about me going across the country and doing stand-up comedy, all about truth, all about being real. You know, uh, doing that moment, I was like, this film is not about me and a road trip about me, you know, hanging out with my buddy Nigel on a bus. There's a lot more to it. And we went back and we cut a film that I thought was really, really poignant and was powerful. And the film was great. And uh, a lot of it was because of that moment. I remember when you and you were on the show talking about when you bought that piece of land yeah. that a school was on, and now you've got Majumder Manor. Yeah. The show, like, the seed yeah. of an idea. Oh, dude. It's, it's crazy. Insane. It's so insane that you can have a thought. It's literally a thought. It's a blink in your mind, and you're like, huh, wow, that sky's cool. That looks nice. It's a nice sunset. You know what I should do? I'd love to build a manor here sometime. Yeah, I'm coming. And it's like that one little moment where it happens. <laughs> now, if you stick to it and it starts to grow and you believe in it, now I have a TV show yeah. called Majumder Manor that's uh, on on the W Network, which is, I'm really cool. I know this is CBC, but W Network is taking a chance on this show because yeah. there's no format for this show. This is just me being real about something I believe in. Well, you're trying to build an inn that's right. in this part of the province. That's right. Would we say that it's a part of the province that a lot of people go to? No, it's right. not. It's a tiny community of 350 people. So you're trying to turn it into its own mini tourist attraction. That's right. I mean, it already is. Like People go there. I, the, the reason why I started this thing, I bring people to Newfoundland all the time. Every chance I get, I bring my family there. Shelby's family, we're like, we go down, we gotta check it out, it's cool. Shelby, Problem is, Shelby is Sean's partner, she's gonna join us. In she'll join us in you mean, yeah. she's pretty cool. She's uh, right, so, uh, <laughs> that's another seed of an idea that started 10 years ago that actually come to fruition. It's really great. Uh, 
But uh, but no, but uh, but so so basically, I've been bringing people there for years. There's nowhere to stay and nowhere to eat. And so the idea was, I've got this piece of land. What am I going to build there? Now it's evolved into this idea where I'm going to build something where people can stay, and the money goes back into the town, yep. and it's a social enterprise. And this show documents and follows it right from that seed of a, that thought, which doesn't happen very often. It's usually like retroactively. It's like Sean's got this thing going on in Newfoundland. Let's do a show about it. Right? And, and, you know, I want to give a shout-out to Burlington, Newfoundland, if you're watching. I know you're at home somewhere watching. Rudy Norman, he asked me to give a shout-out. He said, man, if, you, if you're on Strombo, tell George I love them. And uh, if you give me a shout-out, buddy, I swear I love you forever. For Rudy? So let's say, what up, Rudy Norman? Rudy, what is up, man? He's on the show. He's the skeptic on the project. Is he? Yeah. He's like, you'll see, he's a great, he's one of the best characters on the show. The idea of going home. Yeah. Did you feel the call? Always. I mean, I, I, we, before this project, that's why I bought land there. The reason why I bought the school that I went to, by the way, did I tell you that? I bought the school that I went to? Little yeah, but three, tell them how much you paid for it. Well, you... typical real estate price in Toronto, $2,700. <laughs> typical. But it, like, did the guy tell you the price? Did the girl tell you the price? And you thought you were like getting a steal? Well, no, I did. I thought he was joking. Yeah. I thought he was really joking. $2,700 you can have, but you got to pay taxes on it. 500 bucks on those. I was like, oh, now you're trying to really gouge me. <laughs> Going back home to do this show, there's a lot more at stake for that, too, because everything is real. There are no filters. So the show has got to operate the same way. Yeah, no one busts your balls more in the show than your sister, man. Your sister oh, gives yeah. you gears. Oh, man, she does. And she's all about it. Ronnie, if you're watching, you're fired. Because you know what? <laughs> this is too much. Hako is an EP on the show, right? He is, man. So He's... Does everybody like Hako, Mercer, yeah. you? Do you guys like all know each other? We meet Tom in Tom Harrington? A, well, there's know? one, uh, uh, there's a, I shouldn't be saying this, but there's, a, there's an office one mile beneath the Earth's surface, yep. just outside of St. John's, yeah. out where all those oil rigs, yeah. those aren't oil. They're secret caverns that people are going, and uh, we super noofs meet there every year. Critch, Mark Critch is also, uh, he's the narrator of, of the show. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I shouldn't even be saying it. Danny Williams is the head of our troupe, yeah. and uh, it's good stuff. As you get older, your comedy is about something now? Like, who are you watching? Who's inspiring you? You know what, man? I've, I honestly, my stand-up, I haven't been doing any stand-up. But you still, as you explore it, right? I, uh, but not really. I'm, uh, 22 Minutes has been my outlet for comedy, yeah. and it's been amazing. The last two seasons, I do have to say, man, we've had an amazing time. We've got myself, Mark Critch, Kathy, and Susan Kent, who's on the show. Yeah. Jerry Hall, who's on the show as well there last year. She was amazing. And it's just been a really nice core group. And we're getting back to what the show used to be, it feels like. Truly, truly Canadian comedy, truly satirical. You know, we're ripping apart our politicians like we should and having fun doing it. And they're good sports, and it's been great. Why is it in comedy a brown guy can play a white guy, yep. but a white guy can't play a brown guy? We need to change that. Well, we need to change was that. Was it the military would ever tried that? And, you know, <laughs> yeah. And it, 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 it's it a backfired good on them, right? Yeah, yeah, right, right. I'm not sure, man. It should, it should be uh, a, a new genre. I think I want to call you Mustafa, and we're going to make a nice sitcom about you <laughs> <laughs> in Regina. It's called Brownface now. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, different, it's right? It's called Brownface. Yeah, I'm not sure I want to do that. The giantism, your giant, you, <laughs> totally different religion. No, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. The whole racial thing now, it doesn't even play into my head anymore because I've had the experience where in L.A. I was able to play any role. Yeah. You know, there was no color. Sometimes there is when I'm playing a, a character named Vikram. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Vikram. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, but I do think that's changing. Nice. I think it's good. Stick around. Shelby's going to join us, uh, and I might throw a surprise their way. We'll be right back. What? <laughs> All right, coming up, we'll see if we can get Sean and Shelby to act out a scene from one of the great all-time romantic movies. Dion Sanders, everybody says you're like a legend. Now, I assume in India, you would probably be equal to Kumar Hakman Patel, who is, you know, the legend of Kundalini bareback elephant jousting. I mean, is that... Kundalini elephant bareback jockey. He didn't know what to do. Congratulations, you got married. I mean, the story is amazing, right? Yeah, 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 man. We got married. Uh, uh, thank you, you asked the you, uh, so thank you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I was, uh, I was afraid of commitment for 10 years, and then I, <laughs> I said, yes, we're going to do it. No, we had it. I mean, we've been together for 10 years. It's been an amazing run. You're welcome. Shelby Fenner, everybody. Shelby Fenner, my... Hey, 
It's very nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. Okay, I'll have to see this. Nice to meet you. Shelby Fitter? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. How are you? An actress? Yes. Um, Show a couple photos here. Tell me the story here. Let's look at this. Well, this is great. I mean, this is my beautiful bride. I didn't pick these photos, by look the way. Oh, look at this solo I mean, look shot. at how beautiful. This was from our trip. And uh, this was, uh, uh, of course, a picture of Shelby on the day that we were deciding to have our own special, special moment. And uh, a lot of people don't know this. It was in Bali. Uh, Balinese tradition, it's very important uh, that you have a local tribesman come and inspect your wife to make sure that she's healthy and a good, strong wife. So we had that happen, and uh, he gave the thumbs up. Um, which, you know... And the, you see the look on Shelby's face. She's like, you didn't tell me he was going to come in. Well, and then he did his thing, and she's like, come on. <laughs> anyway, he gave his thumbs up, so thank goodness for that. And then, of course, we rode off into the sunset. Right. Lived happily ever after. Well, Isn't that an amazing photo? That's apocalyptic I, in the background, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would like to, uh, to present something with you guys. Because what? you're actors. Yes. I'm going to give you a scene from a great love story because the, the love you talk about is so powerful yeah. that I'm going to give you each a script from the same film okay. and I just want it's just a small scene I want you to act it out absolutely right? so Cole Green mm. so okay. this is Brokeback Mountain and <laughs> you know what let's, uh, let's do this probably right Shel <laughs> Shelby if you want you know, a little okay we need some All separation right. here <laughs> By the way, there's a lot of cursing in this, and you can't curse, so you have to you have to add other you have to add other words. I got it. I got it. I know how to do this. I work for CBC. <laughs> you been to Mexico, Jack? Cause I hear what they got in Mexico for boys like you. Hell yes, I been. <laughs> what I don't know, all them things that I don't know, would get you killed if I come to know them. <laughs> Let me just skip ahead to the last line. Yeah, we'll try this one. And I'll say it just once. Go ahead. Tell you what, we could have had a good life. Had us a place of our own. <laughs> You're too much for me, Eddie! <laughs> you sound more horse than bitch. I wish I knew how to quit you! Shout <laughs> it, Shelby, we'll be right back.